Hi there. Welcome to my training section. Uh, I'm sorry that I cannot be stay in front of the uh, camera. I'm a one man show. So I have to zoom in, zoom out of the camera. You will see me in and out front of the, of, uh, the camera. Uh, today we're going to do the basic training for the basic refrigeration and charging procedure. As you see on your screen there, we have five categories that we're going to uh, go through in this uh, training uh, session. Uh, the first one is going to be the system components. The second one is going to be a refrigerant pressures, states and condition. Third one is going to be subcooling and superheat. The fourth is going to be the metering device. And the fifth one is going to be methods uh, for properly charging the system. So we're going to go through uh, each of them step by step. Uh, let the uh, training begin. As you see in the screen uh, this is the uh, typical uh, SVAC unit uh, in your home. You have the uh, furnace inside the house and you have the condenser outside the house. The first item you're going to have is the wall thermostat to control your units on and off. You have your blower fan motor you have your electrical compartment you have your evaporator coil you got a supply air you got a return air line you have the uh, condensation drain for the outside units you're gonna have the uh, condenser coil you have your compressor then you have your condenser fan motor you have the uh, electrical cutoff and you're gonna have your servit valve a suction line and liquid line right here low pressure and high pressure and this is just your typical SVAC system with uh, some of the basic components that uh, we've seen on the screen here let's go to the next screen in the screen you will see uh, the major component that uh, make up your air conditioning system and uh, the state <coughs> of your refrigerant uh, when it go through uh, different section of the uh, system. Let's start out with the uh, this is your typical compressor. This is your evaporator. This, I'm sorry. This is your condenser coil you have the condenser fan motor you have your filter dryer you have your metering device and it's on a picture here showing the TSV valve and you have your evaporator coil or your indoor coil you have your evaporator fan motor uh, let's look at the uh, state the job of each component and the state of your refrigerant uh, at each section of the system. Let's first look at the compressor. Uh, your, the job of your compressor do is uh, compress uh, your refrigerant from low pressure inlet right here from your section line. Compress it to high pressure when it come out to uh, your discharge line of your compressor go into your condenser your condenser job do is to condense your refrigerant uh, by release uh, heat from the, uh, the refrigerant by the uh, condenser fan motor and it change the state as you see from high pressure high temperature vapor to high pressure to high liquid high temperature go into your evaporator and then right after your metering device job do is a metering how much refrigerant is allowed going to your evaporator coil 
and from here you have the state is gonna be low pressure 100 percent liquid and it change the state as it's the pickup heat from your indoor air go through uh, passing through the vibrator coil by the indoor fan motor and it change the state from low pressure 100% liquid to low pressure 100% vapor and let's go back to your compressor again and the cycle begins uh, at each time uh, it came from your compressor compress your low pressure low temperature vapor compress it to high pressure high temperature vapor and it condenses it in your condenser coil to the high pressure high temperature 100% liquid and then after the metering device you will have 100% liquid low pressure low temperature after it pick up heat from your indoor air the refrigerant will boil and become 100% vapor low pressure low temperature go back to your compressor and that's uh, most of the major component in your AC system and the states of your refrigerant at a different uh, position in the system so let's go to the next phase what is uh, superheat? Uh, why does it matter? Um, have you ever heard the term of superheat? Uh, don't feel alone. Uh, there's many of the heating and air conditioning out there or service technician or most of our service technician in the multi-family industry uh, don't even know what superheat is, uh, how to uh, measure it, how to calculate it and what does it will do to uh, your air conditioning system so uh, don't feel alone after today uh, we are going to know what superheat is and why it is important uh, to do uh, superheat uh, superheat is the only truly accurate to charge in your system properly and uh, why does it matter? Technically speaking, superheat is the temperature of the gas or vapor above the boiling point of that liquid. Uh, let's look at the, uh, let's take an example for the water. As you see here, we have a pot we have a pot of water and if you apply heat to the water the water will stop boiling and the water boiling temperature the water boiling point at 212 degree Fahrenheit so if you apply enough heat water stop boiling at 212 degree Fahrenheit. If you apply more heat to boil the water, what it will do to the water is will make the water boil faster, the boiling rolling faster. But it will not change the temperature of the water because that is the is boiling point at 212 degree. It's not go beyond that, and it will change the state of the water at this port boiling point is become released to vapor so if you have here the vapor or gas 
produced by the water boiling. What if you apply you apply heat to the vapor of the water that boiling? Let's say you apply three degree. You apply heat to the vapor and bring it up to 215 degree Fahrenheit. The difference between 250, 15 degree Fahrenheit of the vapor and the 212 degree of the boiling point of the water is 3 degree. And that's right there is called superheat. So remember, superheat is the temperature of the vapor or gas above the boiling point of that liquid. And that's called superheat. So for the given example of the water boiling temperature and what is the superheat as we have in the earlier example that you add heat to the vapor or gas you will bring that vapor and gas higher temperature than the boiling point of that liquid and the difference between the two temperatures is going to be a superheat and so what that assemble matter in your air in, in your air conditioning the key thing to make your air conditioning working is your refrigerant inside of it uh, re refrigerant is all called, it's, um, often called Freon. It's different from your water. Water boiling at 212 degree boiling point for your water. For your Freon, it have a low boiling point temperature and for R22 I believe it's around minus 41.6 degree Fahrenheit so as you know you have a refrigerant passing through inside your evaporator coil and it has a very low boiling point temperature at minus 41.6 degree of uh, Fahrenheit and as the blower motor passing the air through the same evaporator coil that carry your freon inside and as you know as the air inside your house is going to be hotter the boiling point of your refrigerant and that's we make the freon start boiling inside your evaporator coil. And by the time it's boiling and become vapor, it will absorb absorb the latent heat of the air pass through the evaporator coil by your indoor fan motor and bring it outside, release it to the atmosphere and make the air inside your home is cooler by take out the heat from the air inside your home that passes through the uh, evaporated home.